Cheers, everybody. What is going on? Welcome to another episode of Tales from the Snark Side, brought to you by the Bowties and Bourbon Crew. As always, I am Maddie KT. To my left here, we have Dr. Tice again. Special appearance, and hopefully a forever appearance, by Booker. And as always, OG. Chilling like a villain. So today's topic is a hot one going on right now. As Gen X, there's quite a lot of feelings about all of this. Because when we look at certain characters and the way that they're portrayed, we always think back to their original. And whenever that changes, sometimes you just can't handle it, sometimes you can accept it, and sometimes they just ruin it. Which is what they've been doing a lot of. So we're going to talk about TV shows and movies and about their remakes and their reboots and their spin-offs. Um, and as any of you who have followed us on our other socials, you know that one of the biggest spin-offs that I have a super big problem with is how they took young Sheldon as a spin-off from the Big Bang Theory. And the only reason why it is <laughs> such a big issue is because the writers are morons. They trashed it, they ruined it, because in one of the Big Bang episodes, Leonard had a bully from high school. And he played Sheldon's dad in the And room. when they did the spin-off, that bully became Sheldon's dad when he was younger. Now you just, you can't do that. You can't take a bully from the future and bring him into the past as the follower of one of the other characters. Do you think maybe they're smart enough to kind of maybe like a nod and a wink in a future episode? Well, though, you know, because remember when Cheers, when uh, Fraser Crane first said about his father and it was dead, and then they brought it up in the Fraser series where, it, you know, Ted Danson was just like, I thought you said your father was dead, and he was just like, it was a bad day. And, right, and, and with something like that, you could almost play it off, but with this, you can't really play it off. Yeah. He was his bully in high school. Mm -hmm. But he's Sheldon's father, and the show is based when he's 8, I think 8 through 12, or yeah. 8 through 13, something like that, of how they do it. And, I mean, I don't know, OG, do, don't you think, like, that's a writer's problem. Like, I understand he was the perfect cast, he was the perfect cast for that. But you've got to remember that some of your, your viewers are loyal and we'll remember that episode and be like, what the fuck are you doing? Well, there, there's there's like a lot of things that writers, I th I'm no writer, I'm not. But I also study stuff, and there's this one thing where I was watching a, a critic, and he talked about the Back to the Future series. Okay. And he said, are they really as good as we thought they were when we were kids? And he went back and he watched them, and his, his theory is that they're not really that good, but what they're able to do is give the tie-ins to the tie-ins to the tie-ins to the tie-ins. You know, like Han Solo said, I made the ship made, you know, the Kessel Run. They turned a whole movie into that. Right. Which was a good spin on. But, but see, they, they'll take lines and cues and use that as the content as opposed to really telling the story. Like, right. They use those things as cues then, and that's where it loses its... Luster it right. loses its like, and that it, but that is, but that is, is it is a perfect example of excellent writing, of how they took this little blurb, they made an entire movie, and the movie was excellent. Okay, because it fit in with with this particular thing, nothing fits in. Whenever I watch uh, Young it Sheldon, more, it was more like, shh, and I look at, out. I look at, I'm like, he's a bully from the future. It just, it just does. Takes, it, it takes you out of it every time. It takes you, you out of it. It just doesn't <laughs> make sense. He cannot be his father. He can't be, even though he was perfect for it. And then... But that begs the question, was he perfect for it? Yeah, I mean, he was a, he was a he, great bully. Was, yeah. But it was just like, they could have stuck anybody in there and did as good of a job, if not better, as his father. Right, and they knew yeah. they were going to do a spinoff. Yeah. And they knew they wanted him. So he never should have been cast in exactly. Big Bang to begin with. Exactly. I mean, that's the answer. Yeah. It's, it's poor writing, and that's how I feel... That these remakes and these reboots and these spin-offs, a lot of it 
is lazy, poor writing. And we're going to get in, let's just hop right into this hot topic right now. I don't know if you've seen this yet. You know, the internet is melting, snowflakes are dying everywhere, blah, 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 because of the remake of The Little Mermaid. Oh, my goodness. And The Little Mermaid is now black. With red hair and dreads. So, that's metal. I, again... But that's not Eric, like... It doesn't... Right. I see where you're going now, because when you think, you boom, that's... Boom, right, and the internet's melting because you take all the racists out there and everything is, oh, you can't do this and that. But, okay, keep this keep in point. It's a fictional character. Who cares? Well, that's a great. That's what fictional character of, uh, doesn't matter. And if you really want to dig down to it, Disney's been right and wrong forever. Because if you want to know what the original mermaids looked like, they didn't look like hair. No, no, not at all. Not even close. So, the only thing that I see, and it's because I have such a problem with lazy writing. And you just you remade a movie, and all you did was swapped out the main character for a different race. That's what they've been doing. Right, and that's what, and that's that's, that's an what issue. That's doing. laziness. Now, for me. And I cannot speak for anybody else. What I can say for me, and I hope this comes across as a valid point. I am a father of a daughter of two daughters. If I were sitting in the living room and I was a black man watching this with my daughter. That's not her. <laughs> this came on... I would be offended of the fact that they were so lazy that all they did was swap it out. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to portray a black mermaid as Disney, write a new original movie. What Give did they it do validity. With the Asian Doctor Strange. All right, let's hop into Doctor Strange. Isn't that the same thing reversed? Let's make the ancient a, a, a tall white lady. Exactly. So, what's the difference? No, because that was bad writing as well. Thank you. There's, there's That's no, where I was going. There's buddy. no difference. That's the the race going. swapping all the way around is just lazy. It doesn't matter. It's lazy writing. Yep. It doesn't matter who the new character is. It doesn't, doesn't matter, matter who the new race yep. of that character is. What matters is, if you want to give validity to what you're saying to this woke nation, write an original fucking script. Write, write the character way they need to be written. Yep. Amen. Give them their own movie. Mm -hmm. Make an original character. Yes, that'd be great. Make that race proud to have that movie based for them and not just be like sitting there like all you did was change the main character. Well, look at that's the, not, that's not. Look at the Princess and the Frog. That was a great princess original and the frog American, awesome. American metal. American yes, princess. That was a great bull, movie. That was, I, I don't know, man. It's like. Worst case scenario, if it's if a black kid is sitting there and be like, "Hey, she looks like me," I don't see the harm in that. That's perfect. That's exactly what they should be doing. It. Right. But Disney, the way it is, they're reverse whitewashing all of their old movies to and be like to to add people of color to add for no reason for no reason other, other than that other than that they can say it's, they did. It's the same reason why That's, on okay. the internet where you see every once in a while it be like the next James Bond could be gay. Who gives yeah, a shit? Right. Give me a good story. I don't care who he rolls into bed with. Give me a, give me some parkour. Give me some cool action scenes. I, I remember That's when so they announced James. Yeah. I remember parkour. I remember when they announced James Bond being blonde in the world lost. Oh my shit. god! The first blonde James. Yeah. Oh my god! Who, yeah, they lost his mind. Blind fuck! It's like, is he a good James? And he was one right. of the best James Bonds. And the the movies were written well. They it was it was done yeah. correctly. Like the other, you know, the other big thing going on right now is they just remade. I'm going to say remade. It's probably rebooted because I'm getting <coughs> confused with what it all means. But now, Interview with a Vampire is back. Yes. Interview with a Vampire has been recast as two of the main characters are now black. Okay. Okay. Why? Why can't you just write a brand new movie? Rice is dead. But the, in the book, they were so well described of what they looked at. Lestat, flowing blonde hair, pale white skin. Right. It was a right. no-brainer of what was in there. What he looked like. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, like you said, 
Do, it's not a race. Do a spinoff of it, like you said. If, do you, if you're different. interested in doing, yeah. do chronicles of Interview with the Vampire. Change sure. the name, thank you. That's all I'm asking for is change yeah. the name. Don't come back out with it and just swap the race and be like, here. Let's do a Caucasian candy man. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, how far are we? Yeah, I know. It's, this is you where you're going. This is where you're going, and I understand it. To me, it's it's fine. It's fine. Why do we have so much lazy writing right now? Because nobody, because the internet has provided so much information. Everybody knows the same thing about everything. So the original ideas are becoming less and less because everyone has access to the same information now. Okay. So you see what I see, I see what you see, you see what I see, when we talk it's, about it. It's handicapped. And then, so, but that takes away the originality. Yep. So, so, but now people are saying, okay, well, I like The Little Mermaid. Or I like, you know, this. But what if, as opposed to, let's create a whole new saga, a whole new character. Yeah, what if we make it exactly the same, except go, blah. Right. Here's your it's, new, it's, here's your new movie. Here's, here's what they should do. For every new thing that they reboot, put a special on a Blu-ray or whatever. Just like you can change the languages in the audio, you can change the race. How's that? For all the racist people For out there. For all out there, you say you want a white mermaid, keep it as a white mermaid. You want an Asian, put it, click, Asian, there you go. There's so you just your... make the same movie, you know. Yes, the dialogue's the same That's and everything. That's what they're doing anyway. Yeah. That's what they're doing anyway. Yes. All right, Hollywood, Disney, Marvel, everybody else out there. I copyrighted that shit. Doc, <laughs> doctor has just called you out. For all the racist people that are out there, give them a fucking button on their remote. Then maybe the button's gonna look like everybody <laughs> will shut up. Oh my! Swastika. Yeah, they just go south so quick, dude. Scary sheet head. Oh, oh, that would be scary. Let the movies be <laughs> movies, but yes. for the love well, of that's, everybody, that's, stop. stop, 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 stop. That's what I have. No Give them a new character. I have no problem with the concept of it. I just have a problem with the way they're going about it. Like you it's said, force, it's, 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 it's heavy fisted. It's, yeah, it's just they're swapping it. Look out. at us. Look at what we're doing. And that's because writers these days are incapable of original ideas. Right. This is why you see so many reboots, yeah. so many remakes, because nobody, there's not that many creative minds because they've been handicapped by the internet. That's what I. That's my thought. And, right, and that's true. And then okay, let's just take let's just take interview with a vampire. Like you said, let's let's call it. Chronicles of Interview with a Vampire. And introduce new characters. And introduce the new characters. And you can still stay true to her book, to the movie, to everything. And instead of having them travel around, keep it just New Orleans. Here's the New Orleans story yeah. of Interview with a Vampire. Yeah. And yeah. go with it. Because the Vampire Lestat and Queen of the Damned, the sequels in the books... They do all that. You know, he forms a rock band. Yeah. I mean, that was the most ridiculous goddamn thing I've ever seen. But... Why not take a chance? People are so scared of losing money and being critical failures. Like you said, originality is it, out it, the window. They figure, out. okay, here's, what, out here's what worked before. Let's just recycle it, put a fancy new bow on it, appease some of the people who would be the minority yeah. in, who would have a problem with this. But it all comes down to, like you said, lazy writing. It, it just makes no sense to me. And, and, and I know Booker has a topic, and we're going to get to it. I've got one more side-off spin to all of this, and we can go through a list and we can get crazy. The writing back in the day was solid enough to do spin-off after spin-off after spin-off after spin-off, and they were all fucking amazing, and they were all popular. OG brought one up. In Cheers, Cheers was awesome. They did a spin-off. Frasier. Yeah. Frasier went on for... That was Doctor. Fucking ever. Yeah, yeah. Doctor, sorry. That's all right. Here's another one. Happy Days. Johnny loves, Johnny, Johnny loves Chachi. Johnny loves Chachi. Laverne and Shirley. Mork and Mindy. Mork and Mindy. Mindy yeah. came from, yeah. One show did all those spinoffs, and they were all fun. fucking golden. Yeah, they're fun. Every single one of them. Where did the writing go from that to, I'm going to throw it right over to Booker, where did the writing go from Happy Days having all these spinoffs that were super great to here we are now with Hawaii Five O being remade? See, I'm not... Alright, so Hawaii Five-O, the remake. Or the remake. Is it remake or is it a reboot? Reboot? I don't reboot. know. Like, I yeah, seriously don't know. Let's just... No. What, what am I no, that's 
the one with Scott Conn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not, if you watch it, it's not, it's not a terrible show. It's it really crazy. isn't. It's not. It's like one of my favorite shows, NCIS. Guess what? That's a spinoff. Right. A spinoff of Jag, which was also a metal show. Right. Oh, my God. And then they took that to a further one, too. Wasn't, um... Oh, my God. There was, there was another spinoff of NCIS. Well, there's a couple of them. There's NCIS, Los Angeles. No, not the, not the, where they break it down by the state. Oh. <laughs> but, like, an actual new show. What's <laughs> NCIS Lancaster. <laughs> I'm waiting for that one. Pull over, Amos. What was, what was the one character's name? It was Gibbs, and then... Oh, did, Bull. Did, oh, Bull. Bull. Bull was another spin-off. That wasn't a spin-off, though. No, that was that just the actor. That's just the actor. Yeah. He's a completely different character. Yeah. But still a great show. That yeah, that's Michael show. Weatherly. They didn't spin that off? That's not a spin-off. No, no, but they, they were talking about <laughs> doing his character as a spin-off. Oh, yeah. see, I thought they actually did this. I never watched Bull. I thought it was the spin-off, and it went. If, if they were going to do another spin-off on NCIS, I seriously thought it would have been Ziva David and, like, Musan. Yeah, that would have been perfect. That would that would have been a great spin-off. That would have been great. Because everybody loved her character. Everybody was sad when her character left. And then magically her character came back for three episodes and then left again. So out of all of them, we, we know, I mean, we can all agree here that the writing back in the day was better. Yep. We're going to say maybe that the internet has killed life for writers at this point. <coughs> Access to information is killed. Yeah, and and, it's, it's, and it's, now we're just rebooting everything. Like another reboot that's out. Don't know if you guys have seen. Quantum Leap is coming back. Quantum Leap, they brought back, and it's also a race swap. Really? Yeah. He's, yeah. He's Asian. Now. He's Asian. Oh, okay. Just got back and it was Asian. No. <laughs> now what's funny? <laughs> what's funny about that? We're gonna let that sink in, everybody. We're so what the fuck was Ziggy then? <laughs> We're gonna let that sink in. Oh. oh. I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You can try to get this back on the rails. I'm oh. sorry, man. I'm sorry. But Zynga on that. <laughs> I'm good with that. But yeah, it's more lazy writing. Quantum Leap was a great show. Great show. And for everybody who doesn't know the premise, this is what's so hilarious about it. <coughs> he jumped into different bodies of different races all of the time. Right. That was, the whole point. that was the whole point of it. So, what? Instead of saying this is Quantum Leap and it's Quantum Leap, why not the continued stories of Quantum Leap? And in this particular story, he's starting off as an Asian man, and then he's going to jump to blah 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 blah. Let's just say uh, Sam jumped into this Asian guy, and now he's stuck in that body. That's what he says. And, old boy. He goes, old boy. He looks in the mirror and he yeah. goes, old boy. Yeah. 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 That's don't, the whole premise of the show. Don't just call it. Just don't just throw it in our face as Quantum Leap again. Give it. Just change one word. Chronicles, extended story, like the new adventures of whatever. The further adventures of Sam Beckett the in further different Sam adventures. Sam Beckett. Yeah. Yeah. That would be so much easier, man. I mean, if everybody's so pissed off at Gen X all the time, why the fuck is every single one of our goddamn shows coming back and being fucking remade? Because those are the only good ones. Because nobody's capable. Miami of Vice is thoughts. back. Miami Vice has been remade. Miami Vice is back. MacGyver is back. MacGyver no. has been remade. Well, see now is Night my, Court is coming back. Is Miami Vice technically a? That's a reboot. Okay. Because aren't they using? They're using the original characters, aren't they? Is that what makes it a difference between a remake and a reboot? If they're using the original characters? I think if it, if it's a reboot, then. If you're going to go the Spider-Man way with whole different actors and just replay same storylines with a different twist on them or something, okay, you know, maybe they're modernizing it. Maybe, you know, back in the 1980s, you know, there wasn't child trafficking or, you know, just new storylines that they could interject. That's, that's to, what I would think of reboot. Okay, okay, yeah. no, I would, okay, I think I got an idea. Because there's a, there's a weird line between a reboot and a remake. I think a remake, a great example of a remake is what Disney's doing with The Lion King and Beauty and the Beast. Doing the live action the stuff. The live action stuff. That's a remake. Mm -hmm. They're basically the yeah. same film. They just have different people okay. doing the same. That's a remake. A reboot would be, let's take, you know, uh, you know Sam Beckett mm -hmm. and put him in a different timeline and 
do a different story on quantum. I mean, Jesus, we live in a world of where multiverses are an accepted, or an accepted part of right. film part. lore. So, yeah. You can just splinter off in either direction and nobody yeah. would blink an eye at yeah. it. Yeah. That's, I think, the different Remake is just basically the same concepts and content done differently as a reboot. is like, let's take yeah. uh, The Wizard of Oz and then... Uh, turn it into The Wiz the and then Wiz turn, and it, turn in. it into... Yeah. Okay. That would be a reboot, okay. and I think. You guys are amazing because that brings me into this topic, which where I was confused, but I was super happy that the writing is done correctly on this one. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air has been remade, because now it's a remake, as just Bel Air. It's the same premise, new characters, same kind of story, but it's a more updated version of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and they, yeah. didn't, they didn't look at us and say, haha, you stupid fucking America, we're going to call it Bel Air. It's different, yeah. even though it has most of the same premise to it, but it's an entirely different cast. It's an entirely different way of looking at it. It's modernized. Okay, so it's the same way that Smallville did for Superman. Yes. You bring in the same characters and whatnot, younger, different time frame, different. what have different you. Time I think yeah. time frame would be the key there. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Hmm. But like, I just, a lot, of the, a lot of the shows, like Saved by the Bell, remade, no, rebooted, because it came back with at least 75% of the original cast. Yeah. You're talking about the college years. No. No, there's a there's, there's a there's a, a whole new, there's like a there's whole, a whole new, new one. Saved yeah. by the Bell's oh, back. Like a whole new God. one. Yeah. It's been okay, so that one's been rebooted three times now. Yeah. Who who are they going after with these shows? That's that's the thing. They're not writing enough. All they're doing is bringing back the, the name and the concept, and not the concept. The, they're bringing back the characters. They're, they're bringing back the names, and what they're I would doing. Watch that if it gets, they're, I they're love just saved by the. They're bell, just coming would, back with okay. Here's an idea. Okay, boom. Here's an idea. Saved by the bell. Oh yeah, I remember saved by the bell. Okay, well, what are you gonna do with it? Uh, you know, right? It, the idea is great in theory, but okay, now you, now you got to task the people into writing it and putting together new stuff, and it was just like, you know, is Jesse going to get addicted to caffeine pills again? Or, oh, no, or, yeah. Hey, it, it, it's, I'm sorry, I can't write, I can't watch a reboot of, or a remake, whatever you want to call it, Saved by the Bell without Screech. Not going to happen. Right, when a main character is not there, and this goes back to my original point, you love the original because of who the characters are. Anything they're doing, Writing is right. anything that they're doing now is eh to you. You don't give a shit because... In your heart, those are your characters. Those huh. are your faces. Those are your people. In, That's in your my life. heart. They left. They left that show in a good place. And when they leave shows in a good place, they should just leave them alone. Right. But something happened. Let's let's just use Dustin Diamond. Dustin Diamond went through what he went through. All that shit happened in his real life. It brought attention back to the show. Producers were like, "Hey." We've got a buzz again about Saved by the Bell. Let's reboot. Yeah, we're trending, so let's we're try trend, to capitalize. We're trending. Let's capitalize on it. Theoretically, that would be the fourth time that was rebooted. Because you have the original Saved by the Bell, Saved by the Bell, the college years, Saved by the Bell, new class, new class, new class, and, and then, then now the new one. Right. Well, what about shows like? Let's look at movies. Uh, when they did uh, Twenty One Jump Street. Right. That, that's a awesome. Thing. That was. But what was great about that was. What's the difference? The difference was... Well, what's funny is that's on my list, too, because the TV show, 21 Jump Street, is back again. That's been re that's being redone as well. But the, the, the great thing about the movies was... <laughs> Let it sink in, the man. They, they knew coming into that that it was just like, okay, it was a cheesy, yeah. 80s, Brat Pack type thing. So they didn't take themselves too seriously, they made a and movie. they made a slapstick comedy movie out of it, and, it, and it resonated with people. But they tried to do that with so many shows. Dukes of Hazard. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, you Starsky can't, and Hutch. You like, can't do Dukes of Hazard. You can't bring that back. It's been canceled. For Jessica Simpson can't bring alone as Daisy Duke, that was worth my pick. And and not to get too, <laughs> I'm sorry, that's, not to, that's the truth, God. <laughs> not to get too far off topic with these reboots, remakes. I mean, it's not just TVs and movies. They they're doing it with animations too. Yeah. I mean, The Tick has been redone. 
How How many times? Powerpuff yeah. Girls have been redone. Animaniacs have Samurai Jack. Animaniacs. How, like, how many times has the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles been redone? Teenage oh. Mutant all Six the times? time. Six times. Like, like, there's at least three different variations of the show on Netflix right now. But the dark, the dark years were the best ones. Yeah. When 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 the mutant turtles went dark, that was that was some good. That was some Hell, good they even stuff. helped out Batman one time. <laughs> <laughs> Usagi and Jumbo, they did with what? All the stuff with Usagi and Jumbo, and, and like and Voltron, that. Voltron. Uh, but GI Joe did a dark series. Too. It was just some of this stuff was done so well, and I guess that's what my hang up is. As I guess the quintessential grumpy fucking Gen Xer that I am, you are. Is how in the fuck can some of these guys get it right, and everybody else can fall so far short? Where they're like, we're not even going to rewrite anything. We're just going to have the same script and throw it to America because I, it's been twenty years. They won't fucking remember. I'm going to throw you a monkey wrench, bro. That's because oh. they're trying to erase history, so they won't remember. No, 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 no I'm going to throw. I'm going to throw you a monkey <laughs> wrench, man. I'm going to go. I'm going to do this to you, and I'm sorry. But He's actually, not sorry. I He's thought not. about this. This is a. I thought I turned my phone. Sorry, not sorry, right That's there. That's Jesus telling you to stop. <laughs> John Favreau. Yeah. Awesome, right? Yes. Mandalorian. Right. Mandalorian. He's he's he's, he's kind of story, following the story of Boba Fett. He also did Anakin. The Jungle Book remake. Well, he did The Lion King, too. The Lion King. Yeah. Which, by the way, The Lion King... But isn't that what you were talking great. about, though? Didn't he, take it from, didn't he take it from cartoon and put it into live action? But it's the same movie. He didn't really do anything. But they're not. They're not, though. They're not, though. So the live action of The Lion King, this goes back while to under the same premise, up. not the same movie. You brought, you brought it up as it, it's not the same. It's the same story. The content is different, but it's the same story. How it's perceived by the audience is different, but it's the same story. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, we're going to go with Johnny Boy's a 50-50? I only bring it up he, to, No, no, no. But is he a 50-50? Like, like, he can make his own stuff really, really good, any, any and good, he can remake something else really, any, really good? Any good author, any good producer, any good director, any good writer, I think, has to have some balance of both. Okay. Because that's their job. Okay. I think. And, and my... Maybe that's part of it. The balance know. in the force is off. <laughs> okay. Uh, I always thought... I thought, I always thought I, was because there's way more too. just not... Right. They're just not cutting it. There's way more people but how, how, just not cutting it. I understand, but then how can you go do something so wonderful as Mandalorian and you know, all that good shit he's doing, right. but at the same time do the same thing? How is that possible? I'm going to go timelines because he did those two before. Okay. See, that, I'm asking. I don't know. He did those two years before he decided that he was going to yeah. fix Star Wars. I <laughs> Take that, Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> this is this is no way this is no way directed at anybody in particular. No, no, Disney. not at all. Not at all. <laughs> plus, um, Jesus, just to get the plus in there. So, I mean, honestly. I, I would say that I know it, man. I, that I know he it. did he did that stuff before. Yeah, I, I, he saw that it was okay, mm -hmm. and then he's doing this stuff now, and he's seeing that it's fucking amazing, and that it's bringing way more people in. Oh, yeah. It's bringing way more money in, and it honestly has saved the franchise. Right. It, it truly has, and there's more coming. There's I more just, stories coming. I was just trying to poke There's the bed. Yeah. No, it's good. Andor. Andor's coming. I, I heard nothing but good things about that already. Yeah. It's like... Well, hasn't Andor came now? At least the first episode? The three episodes. First, three three episodes. first yeah. Yeah. And that And that's going to be a different topic for a different video, because I do want to I do want to dive right into that. Because, but it, I'm not going to lie. I have not watched it, it yet. It's part of this, but it's not part of this. Um, so, so final thoughts here. And one of the other ones I forgot to mention, um, two of them actually. So X Files was remade, and also V. So V was remade. 
as well. That's right. Wow. So we've hit every genre out there. Horror has been, like, every genre has been fucked with in a remake, a reboot, or a spin-off, and 70% of it is shit, in my opinion, because they didn't give us anything original. Well, and another one they're remaking right now that kind of has my wife ticked off. They're remaking the movie The Crow. I did not know that The Crow was being remade. They, they, that's been in development hell for like a decade. I think he's, Momoa he's, was attached to it at one time. Yeah, but now he's not. Now he's not. Now they're trying to cast Bill Skarsgård. Okay. <laughs> Guy that's standing on my front porch right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's... Do you think you cast anybody at this point? It's, it's still not... Yeah, but that's one of, that's one of them movies that... It's still not brand It was brand so brand good, brand. you shouldn't mess with it. It's like Jaws. Remember the time they were talking about rebooting Jaws? It's almost like a comedy. Th Tracy Morgan, I think, was attached to it at one time. Oh See, I would watch that. Yeah. Oh, shut up. I thought they did do that. It's called Sharknado. Sharknado. They did it seven <laughs> times. Jason Morgan and Patrice on a boat fight a shark. Uh, I would pay money to see that. But if they would come at it just as like a straight goof, you know, like what Piranha That's did. That's different. That Piranha was a goof. horrifying movie that was a Jaws knockoff in the late seventies. But then you know they came back and just you know just made it like a straight like NC seventeen boob fest. Where it was just like, okay, didn't, it's like 21 Jump Street. Didn't take itself too seriously. It was, it was a goof. nods and winks, and it, it's, it's all right, but it was, it's, let me put it in a food analogy for you. You can sit there and you can bake something awesome in the oven. It takes you all day to do it, put it in there, whatever. Or you can throw something in the microwave. And five minutes later, and that's what it is. We're a microwave society right now, where Damn. everything has to come out. Yeah, it still gives you sustenance, and it still, you know, fills the need. I eat, love it, but it doesn't satisfy you as a nice home cooked meal that it. people take time and cultivate and go through multiple drafts and try to make something that's at least palatable for everybody out there. It's just, it drives me insane when people that's try to. Everything is just are rush, are rush, rush, rush. That's why I said the internet killed that. It's killed so perfect. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, awesome. That was a good ah, microwave society. I love it. It's like they microwave. I need a hot pocket. <laughs> yeah. Damn they, it. They <laughs> microwave the last season right. of Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah. So, in conclusion, and okay. <laughs> All right. Maybe not in conclusion now because we got to bring that back up too. Yes. <laughs> Prequels. Some of them are done very well. Some of them are not. Origin stories. Some of them are done very well. Some of them are not. Fuck it. Let's just go with this. Let's just keep spinning into this. I was going to have it in conclusion, but Booker, you demand. All right. So Game of Thrones. You think you can poke the bear. Game of Thrones prequel is done amazingly. Yes. Lord of the Rings prequel. Okay. And every, my opinion only. Done amazingly. Now, origin stories that I feel are done amazingly, and after I say this, about 50% of the viewers are going to, you suck. <laughs> origin story of She-Hulk is being done very well. It's being done very well. Her origin story is being done fine. Now, here's where the problem is from everybody. An origin story is supposed to be an origin story. So... Because this is a modern day origin story in 2022, it's wrong in society's eyes because it's not canon, because it should be her 1970 origin story portrayed in the 70s, not now. I get that. I understand where they're coming from, but for content of an origin story, no matter what the timeline is, it's good. The origin story of Miss Marvel is awesome. Again, it's being done in modern times. Oh well, get the fuck over it. It's a great story. And it ties I'm good see I'm good with it. It ties into the, the, the Pakistani Indian triumphs and not triumphs and borders and it's like good with that. that's fine. It tells a true depiction of what the origin story was supposed to be. Moon Knight was done masterfully it tells a great origin story of moon knight but what they did with moon knight different is they did a lot of flashbacks to the past 
to tie in the original story. Now, Miss Marvel didn't do that. She-Hulk didn't do that. But they stand on their own as new writings, good writings, and so they're modern. They're modern. Don't get too stuck up on... that. That's me. That's tying all this back in. Everybody is getting hung up on too much of the originality and not enjoying the new writing. For all you lazy writers out there, everybody can bitch all they want about your swapping of what you're doing. Come up with something original, and we'll boast about it. Yeah. And at least with the Game of Thrones prequel, it's, what, 70 years before... 170 years. 170, 170 years. years. And at least George R. R. Martin, the source material is done. He wrote it, the books, whereas Game of Thrones, for the last two seasons, he was still penning down... Everything and they were yep. literally just flying by the seat of their pants saying okay Let's just throw this in there see what sticks. Let's throw that in there at least with this one The Targaryens and every you know, it's really a good deep dive into their whole uh, Culture their whole way of life yes. and you know who is going to be next to the throne and the first Caesarean birth that almost made me pass oh, out. That that yeah, that oh, that, that, that was that was bad. That was wicked. That was yeah, there was there was a lot of blood in that one. Yeah, there was. Uh, wow. And, and as a side note on that, it wasn't the story itself that originally drew me in to want to watch it. I originally wanted to watch it because there has been hype for years about it. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? And who was going to portray a certain character? And that's what got me. When I found out who Matt Smith was going to play. Right. Doctor Who himself was going to come out of the Doctor Who world and go into the fucking craziness of what... That, for me, was what drew me in because I wanted to see one of my favorite characters do something so not himself. Yeah. And kill it. And, that, and that's fucking where, and, and that's kill where it. kind of placating to fringe audiences pays off. You know, if you can get you, someone you who drew in a whole ton of you Doctor drew in a whole yeah, you, know, you got sixty years yeah. worth of <laughs> programming to bring people in, that's and cool. you know, with besides mm -hmm. it, probably that's considered cool. one of the top three Doctor Who's in that universe. Yes, <clears throat> that's good. And it's just like people who aren't into Game of Thrones will give it a shot and be just like, to see how it yeah. Yeah. yeah, and just be like, holy shit, this is actually epic storytelling and really cool ways of going about things. And to see him play that persona oh. was just, oh man. I'm just like, yeah. Give me another episode. Come on. Let me, let's go. Yeah. I'm into it. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. 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 We got some more. Well, the, one of the things that made me laugh watching that was, like, everybody, like he knows, one of my favorite movies, as dumb of a movie as it is, if you've ever seen it, by the way, John Favreau's in it, and his character's fucking awesome. The Replacements. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So, the guy that plays the Hand of the King. Oh, he's the Nigel Nigel King. Yeah, Nigel Gruff. And I'm like, man, he got old. <laughs> I mean, it's like my wife didn't even recognize him. I had to show him a picture. I'm like, yep, that's him. And then if you were to cross over to that, then he was Kirk Connors in the Spider-Man movies. He yeah. was the Lizard. Yep. So it's, you know, you're, it's <laughs> oh really God, six degrees of Kevin Bacon <laughs> with <laughs> any actor that you I can throw in there. together, yeah. yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> I didn't put that How, House of Dragons and End of the Spidey Verse. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And then and that's just and the, and we're gonna do an actual in conclusion this time, I promise. Because you guys have tied everything in perfectly to where there's somewhat more of an understanding of how this all shakes out and how we think about it and, and what we do. So I just wanna end the episode with each of us going out with their final thoughts. And I'll go first, just to give everybody time to sink in. let it sink in. My problem, as it always has been, since we've started this project three years ago, my problem, grumpy Gen Xer, give me good fucking writing or get out. Period. I'm done. I'm done with your remakes, I'm done with your reboots, I'm done with your spin-offs. If you can't write something original, get the fuck out. Just leave. And yes, I do know how to change the channel. I do. I just talk about it now because I can. I don't watch your shit. I'm over it. You want to say you're doing it to be a woke society? You're not. 
You're doing it to be a lazy society, and that sucks for everybody else. That's it. That's the end. I can't take it anymore. The writing is good. I'm in there. I will brag about it. I will tell everybody in the world that they should watch it because the writing is good. When you start messing with animations, and you want to remake animations, and you take something like Scooby-Doo, or you take something like Samurai Jack, or you take something like Powerpuff Girls, and you take them, and you bubble them the fuck out, and take them completely away from what they originally looked like, I personally can't deal with that. I won't watch the new stuff. And it's not that I'm so locked in on the original Scooby-Doo, and they've got to be square and straight lines, and, you know, don't give them a bubble fit. You changed everything about them. Their personalities have changed. And the, fact that, and the fact that as an artist myself, I just can't stand bubble art, period. I'm not a big fan of it. I just, I can't. Give me crisp, clear, concise lines. Give me a good story. That's it. So that's my beef with a lot of this stuff. Um, that's a lot of beef. It's a lot of beef, and I can't help it. It's true. Dr. Tice, roll us out, brother. What do you got? There are some shows out there that are worth merit, where they took original ideas, flipped them around a little bit, and made great shows. Riverdale, one of them. Archie in the comics turned it dark, went into that Teen Wolf, took a cheesy 80s movie, yeah. Flipped, talked about flipped that it around, years ago. Yeah. We talked about Riverdale. Flipped it around. We talked about Riverdale, and the reason why we talked about Riverdale, and I'm not trying to cut no, you off, okay. Dr. Tice, but the reason why I was so into talking about yeah, Riverdale about is because they took Josie and the Pussycats yeah. and made it an all-black band and walked away from it like it was nothing. Yeah. yeah. That's what that. That's right. Oh, wow. That's what they did. Instead of saying, yeah. instead of changing the name of Josie and the Pussycats, or saying... This is the new Josie and the Pussycats because Josie retired and blah, blah, blah. No, they started Riverdale, they made it dark, and then they just changed the cast and went and just went on that's with it. Different. But it takes nothing away from it. Yeah. It's just we, we had that conversation because that started my lazy writing bullshit. Like, come on. You know? there, come on. There are smart yeah. people out there. It's just that they got those golden handcuffs on them where they can't write. You know, like I said, uh, going back to uh, the other... Like, Buffy the Vampire Slayer was a forgettable movie. Just, you know, basically, Luke Perry did it so he could do the, his eight seconds rodeo movie as a contractual agreement, but then the producers... And Pee-wee needed more... Uh, Paul he, Rubens he, had the best he, scene in the movie. Yeah. He, he needed more, you know... He needed <laughs> but when to be you, out there when you get more. smart writers like Joss Whedon and guys who can take this, twist it around, and be like, okay, outside of the fact that she fights vampires... Let's focus in on the Scooby gang itself right. and their relationships. And, hey, they still are going to high school, so they still have to worry about picking out colleges and passing okay. exams, along with living okay. on top of a hellmouth. That's a great dynamic. Okay, so since you brought that up real quick, mm -hmm. how did you feel about the spinoff Angel? I loved it. Angel was decent. Angel was decent. Because he was, it was the same thing. It was a vampire with a soul, but when he took yeah. over Wolfram and Hart and decided to make it a legitimate business, I was just like, Ooh. How, how are they going to do that? But they made it work. They did it. Where he was basically just, you know, it's just basically find, you know, in real life when you find loopholes in the law itself, yeah. he was finding loopholes in the way that this satanic occult law firm that protects the demons in the world, he flipped it around to make it to where they can protect the human beings, human as, beings well, as well yeah. and the good people. And it was just like, that, that was great. I, yeah. Angel is is great for me, but like I said, it's just you can almost do like wrestling the way it is now. There's it's called lazy booking, where you know, you, hey, let's do the same thing over where you know the heel comes in and does this and whatever. No, you know, it's 2022. People aren't going to believe that monsters are real anymore. People aren't going to believe that Papa Shango can catch. It. You know, oh, cast the curse. Papa Shango. Fuck, did you bring a Papa Shango in? But like I said, there's no, there's no more things where it was just like, you know, you know, with, the, with the exception of the Undertaker, I can't think of another oh supernatural super wrestler that was out there. Come They're on, all out there. You know, you got great heels, you yeah. have great baby faces, but it's you got to adjust with the times. Jesus. You can't think of one. What, Come out of the modern head. day supernatural. 
wrestler. Oh, very nice, very evil. I put the curse on you. Well, now come on, now yeah. Danhausen is the exception to the rule. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very evil. Booker, hit us up with some final thoughts. All right, so Hollywood, here you go. You oh, want, we called out Hollywood right away. Do you want another reason why you're incapable of, you know, processing any good content on your own? It's more than likely because you're too worried about passing along your own political agenda. So here you go. Stop. Nobody oh. gives a shit. Do your job and entertain us. Take my money. When it's needed when to be taken. Yeah. Like he said, give me a reason. Yeah, give me a reason. Give me a take reason. My money. That was short and sweet. That was beautiful. I loved it. OG, top that. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> that, that pretty he, much... <laughs> he left you in a bad spot, man. I, fuck me, man. I, I was... I was pointed I, at him. I'm like, dude, man. I, I was going to go off on like a high note like that, but I can't touch it. <laughs> I agree with Booker, man. Like, yeah, just do. Do you, You're entertainers, right? That's what you get paid. That's why we pay you. Do Fans pay you. That's your job. So let us pay you to do it, as opposed to you telling us what should be good or what shouldn't be considered good. It's up to us to decide. So I echo exactly what he said. And FYI, Ricky Gervais was correct about all you bastards. Ouch. Ouch. Blame it on the bread. Yeah. All right. Cheers, everybody. Signing <laughs> off on that note. <laughs> we out.